Hey folks, so Einstein Copilot is now generally available and I thought I'd give it a test drive. In this video I'll be showing my top tips for working with Einstein Copilot. Uh, this will be largely around data prep, exploring data with Einstein Copilot and what to do when Gentive AI decides to be a bit Gentive AI. So to test Einstein out, I've come to Makeover Monday. This is a Tableau community project all about improving data visualization. So let's see what Einstein can do. I'm gonna pick the most recent project here about social media platforms and let's see what it's all about. So with Makeover Monday, we've got a visualization. Here it is, uh, just the table, and we've been asked to improve it. So with this data, we have not just age, we have gender, we race, ethnicity, income, lots of different breakdowns of this data by the social media platforms. And we're able to download this, but I wanted to look at the data. Essentially, you bring in what you need to do a visualization and not a lot of other things that you're not going to use. Okay, so now I'm in Tableau Cloud. I'm now going to bring in that data source. I go and click this data source button at the bottom left here to go and have a look at my data. Now what I can do here is I know before I've got a little output here of what it looks like. I know I'm not going to use any of these like gender or income levels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a filter, add a data source filter and go and filter dimension just for age. So I'm going to go add. So next I've got category here. So this previously served as every breakdown for all the different dimensions. But now I've only got one dimension, I can be a bit more descriptive with this category. So I don't need to call this category anymore. Actually, this is the age brands that we're working with. So I can go and rename this field. More descriptive fields means a more consistent Einstein Copilot. So I've done a bit of basic prep here. I'm now going to go back to my worksheet. Now I can activate Einstein Copilot. So I go up here, click little Einstein, get my disclaimer that I'm going to be using Gentif AI. That's okay. So here I can actually go and ask for suggestions on what I want to go and visualize. So I can click suggestions and I get a few options come back here. This is a nice thing about Gentif AI that I may not have had an idea of what data I wanted to look at, but I've got some options here that I can go and explore. And you can click any of these and you'll get a chart come back for you. Okay, so here I've got a bar chart that's been created by Einstein Copilot. One thing is to be careful of what is actually generated. So doing your own sense checks here. So for example, I can see this is a percentage field and it goes up to like over 300 that's probably going to be need to be broken down by another field. But that's okay, I can come back to that later. What I can do in this case is I can go and duplicate this sheet. So duplicating that sheet leaves that chart for me to go and explore later. I can come back to my first sheet and I can continue prompting here on the same path that we had before. Because I've got all these other suggestions I can go and look at. This just helps me go and explore and at the end of it, I've got a few charts that I can go and have a look over and then start working on again. Let's go and have a look at some of these other suggestions. Okay, so here, uh, Einstein Copilot has just picked the other metric we have, which is count. So it's just counted every response for each of these platforms. So this isn't very useful to me. And that's fine. I don't need to keep it. I can go and check out my other suggestion here. So what Einstein Copilot is trying to do here is try to make a line chart uh, out of what we've got. I'm sure if you had a more dense data set or more variables in there, you could probably get better suggestions here. Uh, but I can look at this and I know this isn't going to be very helpful to me. But I've still got that bar chart I had to start with. Now, aside from suggestions, you can go and prompt Einstein Copilot. It's very good to be quite specific in your intent of what you want from Einstein Copilot to get a consistent result coming back. What I mean here is if you want to build a build a chart, state, I want build a bar chart and state what you want in it. So in this prompt, I've been quite specific in what I want. I want a bar chart. I've also labeled the fields that I want and put them in the square brackets for Einstein Copilot to know that's a field from the data pane over on the left to go and use. So Einstein Copilot has updated my visualization to go and put age band on color. 
I actually wanted it to put age band on columns so I could see four little charts. So let's see if I can just go and specifically ask it to move age band to column. Okay, there we go. So now I've got H band on my columns shelf up the top here. Um, Iso Copilot said didn't quite exactly make, can't exactly quite make what you requested, but actually it did. Uh, I might have got a typo in here that might have confused it slightly. Now you might have seen ages here, ages 18 to 29. That doesn't quite fit with the other age bands, which is just numerical. So what I want to do is try and remove that text from that. And to do that, I'm going to need to go and build a calculated field. Create a calc, we'll go and tell Einstein Copilot to open that calculated field window, and then I've asked it to remove that text from H bands. So let's see what it does. Okay, so there you go. So it's gone and created me a calculated field. So I'm replacing on H band the word ages with nothing, which is nice. So I didn't have to tell it to use the replace function. It just knew that when I wanted to remove the text, I'm actually replacing it with nothing. It's also given this a field name and it just opened up the window here so I can double check that this is doing what I expect it to do. So I'm gonna say, okay. Okay, so I've had this calculation cleaned age bands, but I can actually get Einstein Copilot to explain what it's doing. Okay, so here we go. I have the actual text here from Einstein Copilot explaining what it's doing in the actual prompt. And then I've opened up that calculator field here again for me to go and check that. That's okay. And that was helpful. I'm going to give that a little thumbs up. Okay, so I made this calculation to remove ages. I'm still using the old field in the visualization. So I need to go and replace age bands with the cleaned age bands. Okay, so I hope that Einstein Copilot can replace the references for me. I'm gonna, this is just one of those times when I'm gonna have to do this myself. So in this case, what I can do is go and drag and replace clean age bands over there, clean age bands on color. And now my values are updated and that all looks good to me. What I can do next to prevent Einstein Copilot from getting confused between the clean version and the unclean version is I can go and hide this field. Now it's not being used anywhere. So I can go and click hide. Hiding the field means that it won't be used by Einstein Copilot in any of the prompts. Okay, so I've got my viz. This is looking good. I just need to go and sort this data. And I want to go and sort it by the youngest age group. So I can go and do that. That's quite doable. What I'm going to need to do is create a calculator field and then ask to go and use it in the visualization. Now, when you do this kind of thing, asking it to create a field and sort by it, it's generally do it as a two step process. One step, create the field. Next step, go and sort by that field. Okay, so there we go. It's gone and made that calculated field for me. It's also then gone and added a bit of a description there as well. So click OK. Okay, so step two, I need to go and add it to this visualization to sort on it. Very specific, sort that column by that field and the direction I wanted to sort descending, so highest to lowest. There we go. So you can see that now that visualization has been updated. One other thing is that Einstein Copilot can understand prompts in different languages. So here's a prompt I've gone and written in German. Einstein was German, so hopefully it understands German. So he's gone and created what I wanted it to do, a bar chart of platform by percentage. One thing to note, it can understand German, it can understand other languages, it just can't respond in them. So it only responds in English. So what I want to talk about is what happens if things go wrong in Einstein Copilot. I can give it prompts that would send it down the wrong direction. So here I've given Einstein Copilot a bit less of a helpful prompt. I've asked for things that aren't even in the data set and it's gone and made a calculated field that isn't going to work. It already has errors for me. And this is what I want to just show is like one of those examples of when you get a bit off track with Einstein Copilot. What I recommend is actually just going and starting like a fresh sheet. If you go and just start a new sheet, a new prompt window, it's much easier to start from a fresh than try and get Einstein Copilot to undo and retrace its step and put it on the right step. It's easier to start again. And this is where duplicating the sheet can help. There's also the option of using the, the back button here at the top to go and actually go and remove that previous field. 
But most importantly, if you find issues with it, give them the feedback, give them the thumbs down to say that didn't work, use some fields that weren't meant to be there, I can submit that. And that feedback is really important because that helps the team understand when it's working well and when it's working not. So if you do find things that work, do find things that don't, just give the thumbs up, thumbs down, and let the team know. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks with Einstein Copilot, do check out the blog post with this video. All I can say is happy visiting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.